Hello, good morning, good morning. I'm so super excited to welcome you all to the day five of the Progressive Educators Bootcamp. It's so, it's so good to be here. How are you all doing? Hope you have been getting value so far from the, from the, uh, from the bootcamp. So we started on Monday. Okay, so today is the grand finale and come on. Today's going to be so amazing as because I read it for us. Uh, Yes. Yes, yes. We are live, we are live, we are live, we are live. We are live. I'm just surprised that today is like the final day since Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So it's really a, an amazing thing. I'm really glad, I'm grateful. I'm glad that you have always been here. So thank you so much. And I want to really appreciate our speakers for, for everything. They have been amazing, come with a lot of value, a lot of value with us. And I'm so glad. Just going to wait for more people to join us and then we're going to get started immediately. Okay, you can see that I have one person here already. So let me know. Can you hear me? Please let me know. Can you hear me? If you can hear me, just let me know. So I can know that uh, you can hear me. So please. Okay. Okay, you can see our comments here. Amazing. Good morning. Oh, this is okay. Oh, good morning. I'm glad you can hear me. So, I just wanted to, if you can hear me, please just go to the one demo that we are live so they can also join. You can't really afford to miss this at all. Okay, so we are about starting the session fully. So, please, if you are here, let me know how the session has been for you, how the boat can be for you, how the boat can be for you, how was it for you? Let me know, is this something, has it been amazing, has it been empowering? The theme of the boat camp is empower educators, transform education, and the aim of that is for us to empower teachers with the skills and competence, and actually for them to become better teachers, you can say good morning, Ma. Let's for them to become better teachers. Uh, we ignite their passion for education and the well equipped to contribute to the advancement and uh, uh and chance a lot. I mean, I so many teachers, so when teachers are empowered and they can do whatever it takes to okay, thank you. I'm glad you can hear me. You can do whatever it takes to uh to transform education starting from their classroom okay and that's why we have been doing this so let me know how has it been for you today is the final day of the of the boot camp and that's it has been that's been so great that's been so great that's been amazing for me particularly i've learned a lot from the speakers and I'm, i hope or you have also learned a lot but then i would like to i would like to hear from you and please if you have yeah please also let me please also share on the group that we are live already. The speaker is ready and he's just trying to fix some things before you come up. Okay, so let's get everybody to be here. Let's get everybody share the link with your friend. Today is going to be so powerful. We're going to be having uh speakers speak to us on, about how to make social media, uh, how to un unlock entrepreneurial spirits. Let me just show you the, the listing. Let me show you one by one while we are waiting for our speaker to join us. So the first session is going to be the power of student centered learning, putting learners at the art of education. I'm going to be having Coach Joseph F. Young. He's ready for us already. That's the first session. We are going to be having strategic networking. Yes, we are an educator. One of the things you can afford to not know how to do is to network strategically. 
We have a strategic network of educators leveraging connections for professional development and opportunities. Uh, our, our speaker is ready for us to, after that, we're going to be having STEM education, yes. We're going to have a STEM educator take us through what STEM education is about, fostering innovation and problem solving skills. And then we're going to have harness in social media, harness the potential of social media, strategies for amplifying your voice and impact as an educator. Okay, our speaker is also ready for us. Then the lastly, which is going to be the last session, which you can, can afford to miss, we're going to be having unlocking the entrepreneurial spirit, creating multiple streams of income as an educator. Okay, so you can afford to miss it. So I'm glad that has been impactful to you. Um, it's okay. And I'm glad that has been a regular conversation with an educator. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, uh, yes. So please comment on the group and know that we are live. Let me know we are live. <sighs> Let me know we are live. I'm just going to be at the back end there. Just say. Welcome to I just to so welcome welcome to the day five of the of the boot camp. It has been amazing. And I also need to tell you, so yesterday we had a panel session on what millions teacher is all about. So if you have been asking, you've been wondering what the one million is about, make sure you go and watch the replay of the of the session yesterday. And you like to join the one million teacher, you can actually do that. Uh, by filling this particular form, let me put up the form here. Uh, just uh, take the take this link, bit.ly, pen, one empty word. That's because we're going to network one million teachers with registration. Just click on it, so go to, go, it's going to take you to a form on your browser, and then you'll be able to fill it and uh, put your details, your name, your email, the school you're teaching, whether it's private or it's public. And once you get the details, you're going to be onboarded for the uh, for the training program. Okay, so okay. Okay, please let me know if you can still hear me clearly. Okay, you're welcome, Mrs. Kubodoko. Uh, morning, Good morning, sir. Can you hear me? Hello, sir. Hello. Can you hear me, sir? Yes, please. Yes, I'm please. ready. I'm, I'm ready. 
Okay, we are live now actually. Okay, that's fine. Can I can I? Yes, you Am can I set? go on. Yes, you're set. Okay. Do it. I just so it might take me some few seconds to bring up your slide, but then you can start okay. with like the introduction and, okay. and go on. That's fine. That's right, fine. Let me just um, go on. Good morning, everybody. If you're hearing me, just um, at the comment session, let me know you're hearing me. My name is Joseph Ephiom. Um, I, I love being called a village teacher. Um, yes, because it tells the story of um, um, how I started um, my practice as a teacher. So we are here. Um, um, let me first and foremost thank um, Abdul Latif for this privilege and opportunity to um, share our knowledge. Most of the things you are going to hear are the things you've already heard before. Um, they are not new. We are just going to refine them or maybe say it in a different way or perspective. So thank you so much. So I recall them um, around April um, 22nd, 2022, I had a session like this to celebrate our second anniversary, second anniversary of the Be Exceptional Teachers Foundation. And I recalled one of the prizes, one of the biggest prize that was paid by a fellow educator and coach. His name is Gideon. He's an alumni of um, the Teach for Nigeria Fellowship. He actually had, um, I think, the grandmom's burial that day. And when it was time for his session, he's, he stepped away from the burial ground and went into a room with the uniform to um, present this session. So I have to bring the video to let you know that I'm not in my house here. Um, we're having an event today, which I'm the steering committee head in my federal constituency comprising of about five local government. So we've been working tirelessly. But I understand that the transformation of teachers requires some level of sacrifice by us and some level of co uh, collaboration. So that's why I am here. So you manage me while sometimes my video will be off and uh, on. So while waiting for my slide to be on, um, Please, I'm not a preacher, and I would love us to engage in the, um, our discussion. I can see the comment session. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. If you can hear me, I can see the comment session. I would love to um, know from people who are joining. Okay. Good morning. Thank you very much. Thank you, Fatima. Thank you. Okay. So I said that I love using stories. So the transformation of education begins for me, it begins with the teachers. So that's why we need to, we need to applaud um, Latif for putting this together. I used to say I have been shouting, doing videos, talking, talking on my timeline, LinkedIn, Facebook, that there's no way we can transform education by starting from the classroom. We must start from teachers. We must empower teachers. We must pay teachers well, and we must make sure that teachers' well-being and welfare are well catered for. So, um, Latif, is my slide on? Please bring it on, my slide. So, which is why I feel that um, educators must rise up. If you are here on this call, please. The, another problem I, I feel is keeping us um, is against us is we. So we, we before now, um, that's why I'm proud to be born in this generation where we have um, great teachers who are now taking the bull by the horn to ensure that they transform themselves. Because for me, nobody will transform this profession more than us. We understand, we wear the shoes and know where it pinches. So we are we are the ones that would do it um, and do it perfectly well. So that is why collaboration like this is necessary. That's why if you are part of this session, if you are to pick anything, ask yourself, what am I going to do differently after this session? So it's not enough for you to gather all the knowledge. After gathering the knowledge, you become super excited. A lot of people have the willingness to learn. Yes, the willingness to learn is what brought you here. But do you have... Does your willingness to learn match with your willingness to accept change? That's a question. A lot of people are always excited to learn, but are you willing to now apply what you have learned? I think for me, when knowledge is applied, that's when it becomes useful. 
So that for me is the hallmark of what we are doing. Ms. Latif, what's keeping our slide? Do you want me to... Okay. The what's keeping my slide? Okay, can you hear me, sir? Yes, I can hear you. The slide is just too large. So the slide is 87 MB, and the limit for the slide here, they can share is 50 MB. Unless, I don't know, do you, can you share the PowerPoint with me so that I can, uh, I can change it to PDF or can share the PowerPoint itself instead of the PDF? Do you hear me, sir? Hello? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you send so, your email to me? Let me add you to the Canva. Uh, uh, let me add you to Canva. Let me share it with you on Canva. I think that's going to be easy if you're using your laptop. I wish I was with my laptop. It would have been easier. As I speak with you, I'm at the venue. Yes, I am aware of that. So okay. Just... So can I, is, is that okay? Is that something you can do? Yes. Um, Please drop your email for me. Okay. Accepted. Okay. So I've sent it to you on WhatsApp, sir. Um, so one thing you need to have in mind when we are talking about um, student-centered and um, um, learning, the first thing that comes into mind is why are you even in school? Why are you a teacher? Can you be a teacher without a student? Of course you are not. The students are the reason why you are in the classroom. So um, when I started, I got employed into um, my um, the College of Education of Arsenal. I I I realized that. Um, there was a gap. Uh, my student teachers most times um, were afraid of me. Uh, they, were, they were just afraid that I'm a lecturer. They didn't have that relationship with me. And I told them, come, you can come to my office as much as I'm in the class, I'm the office. My office is always open. And I recalled um, my senior colleague, uh, those people I look up to would call me, Joseph, do you know what you're trying to do? Those kids are going to rubbish you. Can you hear me, please? Latif, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, sir. Okay, so my yes, senior colleague will tell me... Okay, fantastic. My senior colleague will tell me, Joseph, those kids you are trying to... Those students, you don't know who they are. They are going to, they, they are going to, they are going to rubbish you. They are going to drag you down. And I was like, okay. So, so would you, don't go close to those kids. Don't allow them to be assessing your office. Normally, I, I relate with them to a level that when I go to my office, I always have these biscuits on my table. Anytime I'm going to work, sometimes I buy this biscuit in carton. I just keep it um, by my office. So when I'm there, I eat it. I just drop it on the table. So they already know where the biscuit is. For, for um, some of them who have not eaten, they will just come in there to take the biscuit. There's always sachet water by the mic. So they drink and then... And I, I, I will repeatedly be hearing, and I ask myself, why am I teaching, if not for the students? Because you need to understand why you are even in the classroom. So you are in the classroom, and then the people that are in the classroom, or the people that are the reason why you are in the classroom, are not relating with you, are afraid of you. Two things are involved, I used to say, or that comes to my understanding. It is either you are their friend, or you become their enemy. So, but how do you become their friend? Does a friend, was a friend supposed to 
be afraid of his or her friend. For instance, I could recall when I was in my primary school, anytime we see our teachers, we'll run away. I feel there was a gap. I feel, I come to realize there was a gap. Because you are not threatening, you are not, you are not like that lion or that bulldog where the kids now see you and begin to run away. So let's see, what's the problem, please? I think this session is not supposed to last beyond 15 minutes. Yeah, please, beyond 15 minutes. We are supposed to wrap it and then um, allow other speakers to continue. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking if I, I can even, um, but you need to I'm trying to download the, the slide from Canva so that I, I can share it with you immediately. Okay, cool. So I've been able to download it. I just need to share it now. Just give me a sec. You can go on, sir. Okay, so I asked myself, why am I in the classroom? What's the reason for me being in the classroom? And I realized that there is no way I could be that that effective teacher without having a good relationship with my student. And this is where a lot of teachers are missing out. So you are missing out because you feel, oh, for you to be that teacher, you must be respected, you must be uh, feared, you must um, at all times be, be your, your student must be afraid of you. So your student must be afraid of you. I, I, I always say, I tell my teachers and every teachers I go to, if your children are afraid of you, there's a missing link. There's something missing. So go back to the classroom and ensure that the moment you walk into the classroom, let your kids begin to feel your presence. Let them run and wrap you. There are times I wear my white and white and go and step into the school environment. The kids would literally, like, they would dirty me. I'll be like, please. I just go down on the ground and just look for a way to be defensive and just okay thank you so much i just look for a way to be defensive i just look for a way to ensure that they are we relate very well in a way that i don't go back home and look like a, <laughs> i look like a baby doll right thank you very much okay so um Let's just push on. So you see the picture there. The picture is um, the picture of an American football coach. His name is Peter Caro. Um, this man is said to have been one of the finest coach that has had um, an excellent record in um, when it comes to um, student-centered, um, player-centered learning. So take us to the next slide, please. And this man, please, next slide, just... Okay, so his coaching was closely aligned. His, 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 his coaching was closely aligned with student-centered learning. Has, he, he is always emphasizing that um, um, players, students should be given individualized learning. Pay attention to them because these people have their differences. They have their needs separately. So if you don't pay attention to them um, separately, you will not be able to identify their needs you will not be able to what happens to that child who is just coming to the classroom and then the child is hungry what happens to that child that um, the parent at home uh, 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 there's a divorce or from that single parent at home or maybe there was a fight at home how would you be able to now use one size to say oh you'll be able to evaluate all of them it's not possible right so he was a person who emphasized and trust me you look at football coaches they tend to get more results from their players than teachers. Next slide, please. So they tend to get more. Next slide, please, Latif. So, so the question now is, mention that one lesson you were taught in your primary schools that today uh, you, you still recall it. Please, I want to see us engage in the comment session. What's that lesson? What's that particular lesson that um, you, you were part of or you've not forgotten in your um, um, that you were taught 
in your primary school days that you've not forgotten, that is still there with you? Can you mention, please? Just one. Mr. Latif, if anybody is mentioning anything there, just kindly bring the, the thing up here so that um, I could be part of it. I could equally see what the person is doing. All right, I will do, I'll do that, sir. Mm, please, I want, I want us to engage. I don't want to, I'm not a pastor. I'm a teacher. We are talking about student-centered learning. So I cannot come in here and do the lecture method and then uh, I don't, what I'm preaching or what I'm teaching or what a message I'm sending does not reflect uh, what I am actually teaching. So my words should be reflected should be lasting or should be well lived by the actions. So let's see what, let's just tell me that for me, it is photosynthesis. I, you see there, <laughs> photosynthesis, just because, okay, LCM. Okay, now the question is, was there, were you active in that process? Were you active? Were you involved in that process? You realize that whatever made you Whatever made that learning stick to you was the fact that there was something that was done in that lesson that made you involved. You were present. It caught your interest. You were active. Please, next slide. Next slide, please. Okay. You were actively involved. That's what I was saying. You were participating. So whatever, whatever thing, what, that's what makes learning sticks. Once you are actively involved, learning sticks. There is no way you'll forget it because it is part of you. You are part of the process. And anything you are part of, let's assume you are given responsibility uh, either in the church or in the school, you find out that nobody wants to fail. Everybody are excited because that thing has reflected their interest, has reflected a, a, a part of them. So next slide, please. So any time that the learners are in the center or are in charge, just understand that that learning session is going to last. Yes. So we are going to look at um, some, uh, we are going to understand student-centered learning. We are going to look at the key component of student-centered learning, implementation, implementing student-centered uh, practice in the classroom, and look at um, how we can overcome them and then we conclude and then we take questions. So that's not going to take us long. So please write on, sir. Sorry, this slide, I, I told you I prepared everything from my phone. Yeah, so let's look at um, what we understand. So by student-centered learning, I had to pick this particular definition. Um, the, the year has been taken off. Um, I think what I will, I'm going to do after this session is um, that's going to be later today. I'm sure all of you in the group must have had, I will take time again and sit down with my laptop and make sure the year of this definition is reflected. I don't know if it has shown from your end, Latif, because from my end, I can't see the year. So um, this definition is by um, Lee and others. Um, that was in 2003, I think 2003. So he gave this definition, which actually encapsulates um, what student-centered learning is, it, it summarizes it to these seven points. The first one is the reliance on active um, rather than passive learning. So when we are talking about student-centered learning, it is active, not passive. So the students are supposed to be part and parcel. They are supposed to be the ones in charge of the learning exercise. So the next one is um, it, it has something to do with deep learning, right? Deep learning and understanding. It takes the kids deeper because they would have to, it would have to involve them to think about the solution. So it allows them, it allows them to develop their critical thinking skills, which is an essential skills in, the, in this 21st century. So the next one is increased responsibility and accountability on their part. So children are taught, um, are, are taught leadership, which is um, that of responsibility. When a child, once a child takes responsibility of the learning session and is accountable, right? that is leadership infused in um, the classroom. So that's why, by this definition, you already know the benefits of student-centered learning, right? An increased sense of autonomy. So it gives the child the monopoly, autonomy over what is learning. And in the interdependence between teacher and learner. So yeah, the teacher would have to rely on the child's input. The child would have to rely on the teacher's input, just like that. 
and and you see that everybody will feel valued everybody will feel oh i am important to this learning and trust me once the child feels important come on guys the child would give it her all okay i think in my uh, i'm using the second phone here i can see the date is here so lee et l 2003 i was correct so an increased sense of autonomy okay okay mutual respect within the teacher um learner teacher relationship so there will be respect if everybody will respect trust me once you respect that child and um, there's definitely going to be um, um the, the, it's going to capture the guys um the child's learner um, attention so uh, the next one is a uh, and a reflective approach to the teaching and learning process on the part of both the teacher so it gives people uh opportunity to reflect right the learners will go to reflect the teacher is going to reflect what is it that i didn't do well where am i going to improve the learner on her own or his or her own will be able to to recap oh what is it that i, I did not do well what am i supposed to do well okay next slide please so the next slide is um where are we coming from what would we used to do just like i have said we were doing the lecture method so you stand the teacher will be at the front you know uh, dishing out all the information the teacher knows it all the teacher doesn't make mistakes the teacher is um uh, that superman the teacher is that all-knowing guy who stands at the front and dish out so but the student centered is that which the child is allowed the opportunity to dominate the session, to lead the session, while the teacher is a listener, right? And 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 then there's a there's a document I will share with uh, um, Latif. That's when I get to my laptop about listening. Please, Latif, you are going to make sure this um, this um, because the work we do as educators involves listening is beyond is beyond what you used to understand. I think there was a time I, I trained teachers basically on listening. So there's a document I, I will share with you uh, from Harvard Business Review on listening alone. So you get to read it and understand that your work as an educator, to be able to get the best out of that learner, you must be a good listener. You must listen deep. And it involves a lot of, um, a lot of things for you to get that done. So next slide, key component of student-centered learning. One of it is personalization, one-on-one, -on -one, right? The second one is active engagement. The child is actively engaged. Autonomy and ownership. The child takes, you can see the picture there. The child is the one taking charge. And you cannot do that when you are underrating the child. When you feel, oh, the child is not old enough. So give the child the information. Allow the child to make mistakes. Allow the child to fail. Allow the child to understand that in this process, is not about winning. So he fails and stands up. That's their default settings, right? And the next one is um, um, feedback and reflection. Of course, that definition had captured most of these things. So there's, there's going to be time for feedback and reflection from both the teachers and the students. And the next one is implementing student-centered practice in the classroom. Am I too fast? Latif, am I too fast? No, sir. No, sir. OK, thank you. Thank you. So the next one is implementing student-centered practices in the classroom. What are those things that you know that they are student-centered? You bring them up in your learning. You bring them up in your practices, right? Of course, we know what feedback is. We know what, what, what it takes to, 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 to get this um, 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 done, right? So you implement them in your classroom. And then um, the, in implementing these um, student-centered practices, they, they have something to do with uh, what's your classroom environment. You see the arrow. The arrow is to tell you that all of these uh, things I have pointed the classroom environment, instructional strategies, technology integration, all of these are situations, are things that, um, um, are, are things that makes um, you are, you are that, in, that enables you to implement this student-centered practice. So, so what's your classroom environment like? Uh, does it allow learners to grow? Does it, does it encourage uh, people uh, to express themselves in a way that um, uh, there's no fear? right does is it supportive is it inclusive eh? are they valued are they respected is it safe for them to even air their views you must consider that so what are your instructional strategies so you must at all times ensure that you know, I, I heard i have uh, latif is, is a is a is a flip classroom expert so uh, what are those strategies you use right so flip classroom it's a good one so what are those strategies you use so we move. 
And then the next one, do you integrate technology? You know, these this guys you are teaching are uh, my two year old child, son, is struggling my laptop with me these days. Few days ago, I was just on my, I, I, I was having my siesta, my laptop was on the table uh, in the living room. The guy went on top of my chair and was, I just woke up, I don't know what woke me up, to see this guy turn on my laptop and this guy was just doing a lot of things on my laptop, actually a touch screen. He was just touching the screen. Huh. What are you doing with my laptop, sir? He was laughing, daddy, daddy. Do you know what the guy told me? <laughs> oh God, see, see this guy, I told him, come on, guy, why are you touching my laptop? Daddy, you are stressing me. I was like, I told the brother, where did he get this from? <laughs> okay, I told the brother, I pretended, I said, I said what did he say? He said, you are, you are saying, Daddy, you are stressing me. I said, I don't understand. I'm stressing you with my own thing. <laughs> so these guys <laughs> you are playing with uh, <laughs> uh, extra, I'm talk, this is a two-year-old guy, two-year-old. So. So let me let me analyze this practical case study for you, because we are we are we are we are like I said, this class is not supposed to exceed twenty minutes, right? So I had this child who the 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 mother came to me to report that oh this child is um doesn't this child doesn't um doesn't greet people at home. Please, I want you to flog this child. I'm actually like I said, a village teacher. I I, I have a low income school in Ibaka, and I'm dealing with village kids. This child doesn't, you know, parents just feel, feel that the only way you can get results from children is by flogging them. The only way you can get results from children is by flogging them, right? You need to flog them, you need to flog them, you need to beat them. So the, the, the mother came to me and said, ah, this child, this child does not, this child does not, um, cannot greet. So please, Mr. Joseph, I want you to flog this child. I said, calm down, madam. Um, we'll give you your result, but I'm not going to flog this child, right? Um, I realized that this guy needs an attention. So I gave him an attention. I called him to my uh, my office. I one of the things I did first was to tell him, "You're my friend, right?" And um, I, what what are the things you like? And I started discussing with the child, giving him that personalized attention. One well, the next day when I came to school, I went to him. I was the first to greet him, right? I greeted him the first, and the second time was I was the first. This was the child that doesn't know how to greet. So each time I greet him, he'll be shy. So as time goes on, I, I was calling him, going to check on him. I get so interested in him. I invite him to my office and we laugh together. So I now told him, ah, you are my friend, right? So I'll go to the class and talk. When I talk, I'll like, oh, uh, Michael, you are my friend, right? Everybody should clap for my friend. I took photograph with him. I showed him the photograph. He was super excited. And then what happened? I told him, I took him to my office the other next time. I said, guy, Michael. For you to be my friend, there are some certain conditions for you to maintain this friendship. So the condition is um, you must ensure that you know I always greet you in the morning. So whenever you come, it doesn't cost anything for you to do. Whenever you come, also make sure that you also greet me, right? That's how you can retain my friendship. And if you do that, I have something for you. Can you extend that to your mother when you go back like today? Just go back and greet your mother. I want your mother to call me and tell me. Teachers, I tell you, that guy, the mother came to me and tell me, Mr. Joseph, what did you do to my child? My child wakes up. If I greet my child and he doesn't answer, he's going to greet me again. Like he's going to greet me over and over. And he was greeting everybody. I said, yes. What I did to him was not about beating the child. First, I was genuinely interested in that child. And I gave him all the attention. And then I modeled what he should know or what I want him, the change I want in, in him. And that was very simple. So, that's a practical case of giving that child that attention because student centered is about individualized learning it's about giving that child um, that particular attention right it's not about you you already know we don't need you again you two they appear teacher 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 everything now you they write lesson notes now you everything now you organa you give this allow these children the chance to breathe so next slide, please. Overcoming challenges and barriers. How do you overcome this? Addressing resistance. Please, next slide. Nativ, are you with me? Okay, so I'm, I'm writing on so that I will wrap up. So, so you, you must address as resistance, right? As much as you can try to ensure that you address um, resistance and ensure that um, 
that is done and um, ensure that I'm coming. So, so um, just ensure that is done and ensure that um, you get that done. So, and um, address resistance. Uh, which other thing again? Oh, where am I? Please, next slide. Can you bring up the next slide? Time and resources. Okay, thank you. Time and resources. Offer practice. Okay, so as much as you can, please. I, I don't have two, three minutes to leave. Um, time and resources, professional development, seek knowledge, and then the next, um, yeah, just ensure that you, you seek knowledge and then uh, learn how to grow, learn how to grow in the area of knowledge as much as you can. So conclusion, conclusion. So um, please, 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 as much as you can, ensure that, um, ensure that um, the child relates so well with you, ensure that the child is at the center. The child is the reason why you are doing what you are doing, right? The child is the reason why you are doing what you are doing. So ensure that um, the child is at the center of your learning. They are the reasons why you are in the classroom and without them, there will be no you. Thank you very much for this session. Thank you, Mr. Latif. Thank you to everybody. Please, I have to run. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you so much. Please, thank you so much, sir. Please let's appreciate our speaker. Thank you so much. I really appreciate all the sacrifices it takes for you to be. Please, here. whatever questions so they can send it, uh, they can send it to me. I would, I would, I would, I would, I would, I would reply them later. Let me run. Thank you very much. Okay, I, I really appreciate that. Uh, thank you so much. I appreciate all the sacrifices, everything it takes for you to be here today. I appreciate it. And uh, we're actually on behind time. So I'm going to just bring up our next speaker. Uh, our next speaker now. Okay, so we're going to move on to the next session, which is on strategic networking. Our speaker is here with us. Okay, good morning, sir. Can you hear me, sir? Uh, good morning. We yes, good morning. So we're moving on to the next session. I'm just going to read out uh his profile now so that we can get to know uh our speaker before we get started now. So our next speaker is uh Mr. Odusaya Odusaya Olale Kandiola. So Mr. Odusaya Olale Kandiola is his founder and chief executive officer of Emiga Education Group, an education establishment that trains, coach, and mentors teachers, provides consulting, coaching, and development services to school training program, event, and various education projects, the development of the education sector across Africa and the globe. Ortonya Alali Kadiola has, has various professional certifications to his credit and belongs to various educational and professional organizations and platforms. He's a certified global mentor, education management, consultant, and trainer, coach, and speaker. He has spoken, trained, and coached at various local and international platforms with some awards and accolades to its name. Uh, is a teacher of excellent delivery and experience working with various schools and edu organizations over the past five years. Has organized various education programs and projects, including the Global Educators Conference, the School Reach Africa, the Community School Tour, and Student Empowerment Initiative to solve various education challenges and improve the education pro programs. He's, he has also created a global mentorship program for teachers to serve as opportunity for teachers to interact, in, interact uh, with exceptional teachers across the globe. As a passionate SDGs advocate and community developer, he founded a project, Engage the Community, where he meet with youth at the grassroots level with strategic and community development, the strategic aim of community development, personal growth, and responsible citizenship. So we're just going to stop here. The, the profile go on. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. I really appreciate uh, your being here. Thank you so very much, sir. So you can just uh, go ahead, sir, while I uh, bring up your slide. Okay, um, I hope everyone can hear me. Am I audible enough? Good morning, good morning, Latif. Yes, am I? I yes, I can hear you. Oh. You're audible, sir. Okay, perfect. Um, a wonderful morning to everyone watching me from everywhere you're watching me from yes, across the world. Are, right. I can hear you clearly. Okay, I, I must say this is. A wonderful opportunity um, to teach 
Uh, one of the things I know, one of the things I have practiced uh, over the years uh, is just an opportunity to rub minds together and, of course, um, share some tips that will help us grow in our professional journey. Um, having said that, I want to thank uh, Mr. Latif Adepoji for this opportunity to speak. I do not take it for granted. Um, Mr. Latif happens to be one of the very few persons I really respect. Um, in the course of this year, I was saying that I was not going to take a lot of speaking engagements. But when it came calling, uh, I needed I needed to be here. Uh, and I'm glad I am glad I am here. I I want to say this is going to be an interesting one. It's going to be an eye opener, and I believe everyone will learn massively uh, from this. Um, having said that, um, this conference is known as Progressive Educators uh, Bootcamp, if I'm correct. And I've watched. Uh, well, unfortunately, I've not been able to. I've not been in. The first four days, but I've watched some of the sessions and the speakers have done so so well. Um, but I something I really want to share. Um, uh, metrics uh, that shows that you are progressing. The essence of if I'm getting it right, the essence of this bootcamp is to X-ray our professional journey and provide a uh, a boost an energy booster for us to move forward in our professional endeavors um like i was i was talking about um uh progress in career at one uh, program i do uh one program i attended last year i i mentioned about seven things there are seven things before i go into my topic this is quite important there are seven things to measure if you are progressing as a career person there are seven things you need uh to know how uh, to uh, that shows that you are progressing we call it the metrics of career progression the metrics of career progression number one if you want to know that you are progressing in your career uh number one is the knowledge level i call it the knowledge level these are the seven metrics number one is knowledge level it talks about what you know what you know um over the space of three months six months one year if your knowledge level have not increased if what you know today is what you what you know yesterday is still what you know today that means you are not progressing uh progress is a function of knowledge what you know before and what you know now okay so uh that's number one number two uh, another thing to measure your career or professional progress as an educator is your skill the skill acquired what you can do um we are in the age of um uh we are in the age of uh digital what's it called now we expect or it is expected of every educator to be uh in the know when it comes to digital usage digital tools and the likes so what you know and uh, what you can do that's the skill the skill is also important the skill is important so you, you you measure your progress by the skill that you have acquired by what you can do by time number three let me quickly run is the experience that you have gone uh, you you measure your progress by the experience that you have that means what story you can tell the story that you have last year must be different from this year that shows that you are gathering experience as much as possible and then when it comes to the field that you are, as well in the education space, you are not a novice. I'm going somewhere. Number four, uh, that to measure your 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 level of progress is the landmark that you have reached. What are your major milestones? Uh, most of the time, I usually ask my uh, my mentors, and uh, in every single year, there must be a major milestone that you have reached. So if you have not reached that, if there is no major, if I ask people. Um, in this uh, well, in, in this uh, training now, that what are your major milestones? Just mention three that you can say as it as an educator, I have done, I, I, I have reached this, I have reached this, I have. Reached. If there are no major milestones, it could be promotion. 
maybe from an educator to an administrator or from a teacher to a, an HOD or what's it called? Just those simple ones. And even the bigger ones, I have spoken in these conferences. I, I have spoken with social so persons and the likes. So these are major milestones. So these are the things that you use to measure what you have achieved over time or to measure your progress. Number five is the problem solved. Another way to measure your progress as an educator is the problem you are solving. If people wake up to me and ask me, what are the problems you are solving? I am solving training deficiencies. I am solving digital uh, digital gaps. I am solving uh, developmental deficiencies. I am solving community exchange and development deficiencies and so on. Uh, another way to, uh, to measure your progress, what are the problems you are solving? What are the problems you are solving? What are the problems you are solving? So it's one of the ways to measure your progress as well. And then the most interesting thing, another one, which is number six, is your value worth. What do you worth as a professional? Like I usually tell people, I, 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 I did a lecture on how to increase your market value. Every professional has a market value. So to measure your progress, your value must be different. For instance, when I started, I rated myself as an as a hundred k value uh, educator. But as it stands, I am worth over two million per month as an educator. So you must know, you must increase, and there is a way to measure that. Is is a story for another day. So the last one, this is where we are going to measure your progress. You must look at the network you have built. One way, one significant way, which for me is one of the most important, if not the most important, one significant way to know you are progressing as an educator or a professional is the network you are built and the network you are growing over time. And this is where we are going today. So your network means who you know. I, I have done this over time. I have done this litmus test over time and i have asked people uh doing some of the trainings i had on this particular topic uh i had about um 125 uh people in that training and i asked them can you can you can you have can you tell me 10 major persons in the education space that you know and you have relationship with if i had only one or two persons were able to mention three and i said this is a problem um it, it is there is a pointer or there is a uh, general saying that says who you know determines what you have who you know determines what opportunity that comes to you who you know determines where you go who you know determines the result of your of your entire professional journey so in today's class we are going to be looking at professional network how do you build one? What does it mean? So, and what must you be doing over time? Now, let me say this: that in in the world of networking, in professional networking, there are three things that are very important. Number one, you need to know how to make networks or how to build networks. Number two, you need to know how to multiply networks. That means that. You must be a person of growing network. Your network must grow over time. How to multiply. And the third one, you need to know how to manage your network. So these are our major focus today. And then if I didn't time had permitted me, I would have asked like two or three questions. One of the questions I would have asked is, for you, like I've usually done, but if you're on the platform here, if you're following us, uh, let me ask you this, put in the comment box who do you know in this education space that you are who do you know who do you know in the education space that you are currently you can put it in the comment box so in in today's class we quickly look very very short at professional networking now what is professional network you can let me take it to um the next slide let me take it to the next slide so uh, when we talk about network in a simple layman's language network is network is who you know your network 
is who you know. I I have um I have I did, there are two types of network, and then we we'll talk about uh, uh one one of them is uh, personal. But today we are looking at professional. Personal networks has to do with the your network that that a group of people that are committed to you that you are related by blood or by religion or by association etc. Those ones can be your friends. They can be your family members, your church members. Those are your personal network. Now, when we now talk about your professional network, that is what we are showing now. For your professional network, uh, your, your professional network is people that you are related together by work. The people that you are related together by work. Um, as an educator, your professional networks are fellow educators like you, uh, school leaders, industry experts, administrators, policy makers, government agencies and parasites representatives, um, uh, uh, politicians that are into education field. Uh, your, your professional networks are experts, your, your, your colleagues, um, whether local or international. So these are your professional networks. And uh, we begin to look at why do we need to have a network? What is the purpose of a network? Why do you need to build a network? Um, number one is um, uh, for learning. We are in the next slide now. Your, 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 the purpose of network is quite simple. Number one is for learning and capacity building. Uh, nobody is an island of knowledge. And as such, uh, when you have pool of networks, you have various learning and capacity building opportunities. Because uh, when you have networks, you have people of diverse knowledge, of diverse background, diverse culture, diverse experiences, who, who through their, um, their uh, platforms, through their programs, through their activities, could impact you in terms of knowledge. Uh, there are a lot of people in this space that I've learned from. In fact, uh, one of my professional networks encouraged me to have my first textbook. I remember uh, when Professor uh, Dr. Jerry, uh, 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 the chief, um, uh, the chief NECO examiner, uh, we, were, we were just in a professional network, we, we call it STAN, and then uh, Science Association of Nigeria, he posted something about his textbooks and the lies. And I said, wow. This man is doing a great work. It's something I also can do. And I come up, I came up with that idea. I started writing the book and I showed it to my networks. And then out of some of them gave recommendations and so on. I had the book, the same thing and so on like that. Uh, there are a lot of educators on their platform that I learn from. I go to their pages, I learn from them and I have personal relationships with them. So when you build quality networks, you have quality learning opportunities. Most of us are deficient in learning and in knowledge. Don't forget, I have told you that one of the metrics of your progress is knowledge. Most of us are deficient in knowledge because we do not have network that could provide those learning opportunities for us. Quickly, number two is professional advice and mentorship. When you have full of networks, you are, you are, you are not short of mentors. Uh, currently in the education space, I have about five mentors uh one of them is professor patrick kutomi uh all of us uh, is a, is a well-known person and a whole lot of them like that i have keisha top top keisha is the global teachers prize winner in from the us we talk over time and these are people that that have impacted me and through their works through the interaction i have with them through their mentorship I am progressing i am improving so when you have full of networks you have options of people that can mentor you you have mentorship opportunities and development you can work uh, you can get to persons and say okay this is what i'm planning to do kindly give me an advice uh, that, that was a time i needed to do a particular program i needed to reach out to the former commissioner for education and they got say that uh, mrs Folashade, uh, the, our, our, our advice is one in a million uh, despite i have struggled with a lot of things that advice alone uh, uh, brought me out of that um, confusion and i'll say the same thing with keisha and a whole dr rita from mexico a whole lot of them like that um so when you have networks 
you have uh, mentorship. Number three is professional opportunities. A whole lot of them. I can I cannot count the uh, the number of opportunities I've gotten from Kijisha, for instance. Uh, 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 there are grant opportunities, um, uh, professional development opportunities. I remember one of one educator that uh, one of them. I think it was Dr. Rita that, that gave me opportunity to speak in the most important platform for speakers across the world, International Speakers Group. I, I got to speak in that place this year, and it was a wonderful one. And you can go to that page and look at my presentation. So I, I can boast by saying that I have, speak, I have spoken in the largest gathering of speakers across the globe. So you have different opportunities. And like I said, you are short of opportunities because you are short of people. And it is true opportunity that you risk the zenith. So when you are not getting opportunities, is because the reason you are not getting opportunities is because you are limited in the pool of networks that you have. So it is important that you begin to think cogent information in building your network. It's, it's important you, you begin to take uh, opportunity in building your uh, your networks. So, and, and apart from that, information share, you get information, you get uh, solutions to your, to your to your problems, you get professional, you are you are you get professional support, and then you get recommendations. I I can categorically say that I am I am doing a particular program currently. Um, that it is via recommendations that I got to that place. I I got the opportunity of um, I got the opportunity of uh, lecturing um, lecturing the university. Uh, despite my short experience in the classroom, uh, I've spent less than um, five years uh, officially, but I've spent less than ten and less unofficially. Officially, I've spent less than five years. I've got the opportunity to lecture, you know, via networks uh, because they see what I've done. The man needed to call me and they gave me a recommendation to the director of that of that university and for, for that uh, section of the university and from there i got recommendations uh people can be your voice where you are not and that is why you have to take building networks as a business uh most of the time we are not there but people can be your voice and it depends on the quality of networks that you have built so you have many voices speaking to you where you have intentionally built networks, quality networks over time. So it is important that you understand this. So these are seven major purposes of, of networking. So it is important that we take note of that. Okay, quickly to the next slide. Let's look at um, uh, networking. What does, what, what does it mean to network? Uh, networking uh, is exchange of information and ideas is exchange of information and ideas among people with a common profession or special interest so when we say we want to network that means you, you are you are making a deliberate effort to exchange information and idea with people within your field with people within your field so um networking is a deliberate act Quick, quickly take me to facts about networking that you need to know know these facts today number one networking is connecting networking is connecting you are making deliberate effort to connect to people you are moving out of your comfort zone to meet with people exchange ideas and develop yourself so networking is connecting it is not this not it doesn't have to do with uh, whether you are introvert or an extrovert uh connecting is one of the professional routines that everybody that is intending to go higher must do so make networking a routine when you make networking a routine over time you build a robust network as uh, what's it called network community so networking is co connecting number two networking is marketing you, you are when you are connecting with people you are marketing yourself you are showcasing yourself what you have your experience your knowledge your expertise your skill your competencies and a, lot, a whole lot of things so when so networking when you understand this fact you will go far
when it comes to meeting with people and 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 and, and building a robust network so you are marketing yourself and that is why i usually tell um uh when i when i take classes on this particular topic i usually tell people if you are if networking is marketing and you are marketing yourself position yourself such that you are going to be visible you are going to be relevant and then of course you are going to be a voice position yourself to be visible position yourself to be uh, valuable position yourself to be recognizable it is very important so you are marketing yourself so and that is why i know you have talked about branding you have talked about branding in the course of people and that is why in in networking you are brand your branding must be very important and sure it's like you are going to a particular a two market store in the first market store um you see the best the place is unkempt everywhere jam packed no no sections for this sections for that but you, you go to another you go to another place and then everywhere is there again colored um and neatly uh, decorated everywhere is looking going i am very sure you are going to want to be in the place that is colorful and the like that is how networking is and that is why you must brand yourself so colorful that you'll be attractive uh, who you are determines who you attract please take note of, let me take it that again who you are determines who you attract and another thing is what you do determines the caliber of people that will want to come to you what you do determines the caliber of people that want to come to you so know this game the, the, the game of uh, of networking is a game of marketing you are marketing your intellectual capacity you are marketing who you are you are marketing what you can do you are marketing what you have done you are marketing a whole lot of things so it is very very important to take note of that and then the last part is that my networking is a tool I have used this tool to achieve a whole lot. Um, I, I have I, I told some persons the other time that there was a time I, when I started um, when I started Emerald, I did I didn't have a lot and because people would tell me I uh, um, it's because you have something to work. I said I didn't I didn't have the penny, but most of the things I do there are based on the community. I just share that I'm starting this. I share the vision, and I saw some people coming to say you help me do graphics. This one say I will do video for you. I will do this. The uh, when you have quality people, work become easy. So uh, the the level of progress you are making now is as a function of the people you have around. Let me take let me take it again. The level of the progress you are making now is as a function of the and the quality of people that you have around. So when you have quality people around, your ideas fly. What makes ideas to fly? what makes a profession to 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 shine is the quality of people around go and check people that are shining in the education space look at the people around them they are the people that are making them shine so it is important to begin to uh, to begin to network now and how do you begin to network that so we we're going to setting networking goals um i'm sorry i've said a lot of things so uh, when we now talk about networking goals, it talks about uh, your plan to build networks, and that is what I want you to start doing from now. You need, you need to start, you need to start uh, having networking goals. So networking goals are what you need. I want you want to achieve from your networking investment. Like I said, so I am, I am putting it to you to begin to network meaningfully and intentionally. So to start with. You have to have networking goals. Who do you want to meet? Who and who do you want to start attracting? Don't forget to attract the right kind of persons. You need to be the person that can be that is attractive. So to be attractive, you need to do a lot of things. You need to showcase. You need to clean up your social media platform, uh, brand yourself well, um, and of course, begin to put up quality content. Begin to uh, begin to showcase what you have done, what you are doing. And in fact, sometimes I usually, I, I there was a time I met a lady, and she's doing an amazing thing within uh, the classroom and even outside the walls of the classroom. But the problem is nobody is seeing it 
So this is the time you begin to allow people to uh, to see what you are doing. But it has to do with the goals. Your goals matters a lot. Uh, for me now, my my goal this year, my networking goal is uh, is to attract international professionals. And between now, between January and this now, I have attracted over 800 international professionals. 800. I have met with people from Mexico. I have met with people from IT. I have met people from Germany, people from UK, from US, and that, and it's still counting. Before the, before the end of the year, my goal is to attract over 2,000 international professionals within the education space, policymakers, and that. So whatever I'm doing now, I, 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 for those that have been following me, you have said that I've been doing international webinars. I have been doing a, a, a global education summit and the like. I'm making everything global because my target is to attract global audience. So you must ensure that you set those goals. So after you have set your goal, please, next slide, let me quickly tell Your sources of network can be virtual or non-virtual. Take opportunity to start reaching out. Take opportunity. Your social media platform is a, is a, is a source of your network. Clean it up. Make sure you use correct name. Brand your social media uh, platforms. Instagram. You do video on Instagram. Uh, uh, take quality content on Facebook and your LinkedIn account. Your status for, for uh, refurbish it and uh, brand yourself well on that platform. Your Twitter. Have conversations that are meaningful on Twitter platforms. Use your social media platforms to begin to rule out. Then showcase what you are doing. And if you don't have what you are doing now, think of something you can begin to do that can attract people. Because it, it is people of value that can attract values. So it is important that you begin to think of what you can do to begin to attract people that you want to attract. So start doing something on platform. Then take conscious effort to reach out to people that are big in the game, people that are big in the society, uh, in the in the space, reach out to them uh, and um, uh, let them share ideas with you. Take a strategy session with them and then, of course, begin to move on. Those are, and then, of course, go to programs. This uh, program is an opportunity. Those of you that have registered, reach out to people that, that are in this space. Go to attend events, attend programs, uh, whether virtual or non-virtual, so that you can begin to network with people. Begin to take this uh this um uh deliberate effort as i begin to round up there is no time it's a it's a huge it's a huge one is a is a huge class now as i begin to round up let me go back to what i've said over time in networking you must learn how to build or make network how to multiply your network and how to manage your network this is the height of professional development. And let me tell you, when you start building networks, various opportunities start to come on your way. And then, of course, you begin to go bigger. Or you can start from where you are now. Set goals. And from there, you, can, you need networks to apply. You need community. And I wish you success as you begin to build your networks. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mr. Latif. Can you hear me, Mr. Latif? Can you hear me, Mr. Latif? Wow, thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. This is really amazing. I hope from what you have learned from, from this now, you now have like a, a blueprint. Okay. Um, I, I think I miss Mr. Latif next to work. Is, um, Mr. Latif, are you there? So if you have any question, um, you can kindly, if you have any question, you can kindly um, reach out to me. 
I'll, I'll be so glad to um, have all your questions. So if you have people that are joining, if you have people that are joining online, you are, you are part of the live show, um, do put your, your question in the comment, put your question in the comment section of the live uh, YouTube. Uh, you can put your question and then if you cannot ask them now, uh, you can do what to um, send me um, a DM or send it your questions directly to uh, Mr. Latif. It will reach out to me. And then if you want to know more or you want to be part of what we do um, at Emerald uh, Edu Concept, you can go to our website uh, www.emeraldeducationsystems.com.ng you can go to all our Facebook all our social media platforms you see what we are doing there and then you can be part of our trainings and programs uh, so um, thank you so much it is good that you build networks Mr. Latif Okay, hello, please. I hope everybody can hear me now. I'm just sorry I had some issue with my uh with my network. Please let me know if you can hear me now. Okay, can you hear me, please? So just going to get right into the next session. Our speaker is ready for us, and uh we can't really wait to get started. So she's going to be speaking on STEM education. I'm just going to please can you confirm if you can hear me, ma? So just going yes, to I can hear you profile now. I can hear you. Okay, am I audible enough, ma? I don't know if you can hear me, but I can hear you clearly. Okay, thank you so much, ma. All right, so I'm just going to get started by reading out a profile. So, uh, Mrs. Adiola, okay, ma, Mrs. Adiola Kisu Lue is a dedicated and innovative biology teacher, Lagos State Public School. Is passionate about creating an engaging and inclusive learning environment. I can hear you too. So I'm trying to read out your profile now. So she's passionate about creating an engaging and inclusive learning environment where learners collaborate, leverage technology to learn, and inspire themselves for the academic excellence needed to emerge globally. She backed her bachelor's degree in biochemistry, a master of business administration from Lagos State University and a postgraduate diploma in education at the University of Lagos. In 2021, Adiola won the prestigious Fulbright Teaching Excellence and Achievement Award, a fully funded initiative of the United States government. She's a member of Mentors New York Academy of Sciences, AFS Global STEM Educator, a certified Microsoft Educator, a fellow innovative teacher, UK Nigeria Hub, member of the Biology Teachers Association, Bauta,
Sorry, Hall. Probably we might still need to wait for Mr. Abdulatif. I don't, I am not even sure if I am audible. Probably somebody can confirm for me in the chat box. However, we might need to wait just some few, probably like 60 seconds. Let's see if we can come on board again. Thank you all for your patience. Hello, can you hear me, Ma? Okay, welcome back. Okay, thank you, Ma. So I don't know. I don't even know that my network has even caught me off. I just finished reading the profile, and I I just like go back to the platform. I realize that I'm no longer live. Okay, it's I'm, fine. I'm it's fine. Okay, Ma. Can you yeah, you were and... just you were almost at the tail of um the profile. The profile, yes. Yeah, so it's fine. Okay, Ma. Can I'm I just go ahead? Say, yes, you can, ma. I'm just going to share. All right, screen. thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning, dear fellow educators. Good morning, Mr. Abdulatif. And thank you for the opportunity to come on board. Thank you for giving me the um privilege to I, I take it as a privilege. Thank you so much. I I don't know if I can have my slide up, so I hope that comes up in a um, good time. Unfortunately, I have been, I am out of Lagos, so I have to look for a place where I can get a um, good network. So I have to stay like practically outside and um, it's fine if I have to do this sacrifice for my fellow educators, for you to become better, for us to make education across Nigeria better, I think is worth it. So my name is Adiola Akishulure. I am a public school teacher in Lagos State, and I teach specifically biology. And I, I want to be talking to my colleagues in STEM field. I hope I can still continue if I am audible. Um, probably if I can get... You are audible, ma'am. Oh, I can hear you clearly. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much for the confirmation. All right, can so... I think sometime few like last weekend, somebody said, please, what's the meaning of STEM? So I don't want to start by saying, oh, everybody knows the meaning of STEM. So STEM means science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So how can we foster innovation and um, problem solving skills in STEM education? That's what we're gonna be looking at briefly this morning. And of course, when we hear of innovation, we are talking of how we can make our students come up with new solutions, new ideas. How can they move? How can they solve problems around them? So our uh, students are not just beyond coming to school, getting the knowledge. At the end of the day, we expect that they're able to come up with ideas. You see, we shouldn't box them that, oh, this is the way they do it. This is the way it should be done. Let them come up with something new. Let them come up with new ideas. Let them come up with new solutions to problem and issues around them. And of course, um, problem solving, of course, um, finding solution is still about finding solution to difficult or complex issues around our students. And I would say that innovation should start with the teacher itself. So if you, as, a, as an educator, if you don't believe in innovation, if you are not innovative, you're not creative, then it's going to be difficult for you to raise a student that will be. So I am going to say that it's going to start with us. And um, I'm going to just quickly mention three things that can help develop our students' critical thinking and creativity. So for us to foster innovation and um, solve problems, we need to 
encourage curiosity. So how can we encourage curiosity? I'm still going to take us through some strategies that we can use in the classroom um, to encourage um, creativity or curiosity uh, with among our students as STEM teachers. Then, of course, we should also promote divergent thinking. So we shouldn't look at, make your student look at problems from different perspectives, let them come up with solution, come up with, uh, at times when I go to the class, I come up with a lot of stories that will make them think, why is this thing like this? Why can't we have it like this? Why can't it be like this? So make them think, give them activities that will make them think out of the box, not just something that it shouldn't be stereotype. We shouldn't make them have a stereotype mindset or thinking. We should give them divergence. Don't shut any student, even when we feel they are giving the stupid, or I don't, don't let me use that word, probably, oh, the, 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 the contribution they are making, it's not really on point. You can bring them on point, you can guide them. You can say, okay, what about, have you ever considered this? Have you thought of this? So there are a lot of ways by which you can actually bring them on board. Then we should embrace experimentation. I think um, one of the speakers told us, um, we should let them, let them, give them free hands, let them make mistake, let them try out something. S um, science, is about experimentation. We're still going to talk more about strategies that we can use. So let them try out things and um, let them oh make mistakes. Then by the time they're getting it, they say, oh, okay, um, this is the way not to do it. This is so they are not just learning how to do it, but they are also learning how not to do it. So let me quickly take us through some strategies that we can use to teach STEM and how that we can also use to foster innovation and problem solving skills. I hope my um, slide will still come up. Mr. Abdulatif. All right, however, let me continue. All right, so the first strategy that I would like to talk about so by the time this slide is coming up, you actually see it there. It's the use of flashcard. Okay, so I think I'm on the, the next slide now. So you can move to the next slide. Yes, thank you. So the use of flashcards. Um, the students that we have these days, they need lots of visuals. So you can use visuals to promote innovation in your class. At times, oh, if you look at that um, slide, all the pictures there, they're actually my students. So um, if you are teaching a topic like habitat, I can come with several flashcards of organisms, of habitats. Then I just give it to them as a group. And um, they feel they are playing, however they are learning. So they, I tell them, we are sort it, sort it out, this organism, where can it be found? What are the adaptive feature? What are the things that will make um, a particular organism to live in a particular habitat successfully? What are like that? So at times you can tell them, oh, use this, use this flashcard to create a um, food chain. So they are not just learning in uh, isolation. They are able to relate. They can see the pictures and whenever they, they're asking them questions probably in their examination. They can actually relate. They remember, oh, that day, yes, I remember. That was when my teacher came with so many things and she asked us to do this or he asked us to do that. So they are able to relate with what you're teaching them effectively. Another method that you, you can use to create an innovative classroom, STEM classroom or STEM education, it's hands on. I think I mentioned that, that we should embrace as an educator, as a STEM educator, it's very important that you embrace experimentation. Experiment is very important. So let them carry it out. Um, you want to talk about diffusion, you can come with, I'm sorry, I might be using a lot of um, uh, biology example, Probably, but don't worry, I'll try and use physics and chemistry and basic science and some uh, some other examples like that across them. So you come, you want to teach electricity, come with bulb, come with battery, come with those flexible wire. Tell them, show them, we switch everything, bring it to the class. You know, even by seeing all those um, uh, materials, they, you're already sparking up their curiosity they are already excited. Oh, what is going to happen today? You want to talk about titration? Get acid, get base, you know, let them see the colors. 
Oh, um, you want to talk about um, um, food tests? Get um, potato, get your iodine. Very simple. Just a drop, one or two drops on, on the potato. They can see the color turn blue, black, you know, and tell them to carry it out by themselves. They are, they are excited too. So Anton, um, uh, dissection for those of us in biology or basic science, you don't even need, and thank God for technology, I'm still going to get there. So, uh, oh, I don't have material, I don't do this, we're still going to talk, I don't have that. We can still talk about that as we move on, on what you can use to cover up for, uh, cases where you don't have enough materials all right let me move on to the next point authentic learning so you can just move the slide authentic learning yes authentic learning is when you bring what you're teaching alive you're talking about digestion okay whenever i'm talking about digestion with my students and of course at times i come with bread i come with something into the class everybody's excited okay so i just put it in my mouth i start chewing okay so what happens to this bread as i am chewing it so it goes through as i'm chewing what's the what was that process called mastication okay so um what's the role of my teeth what's my teeth doing what's my tongue doing what's the saliva doing so like it is practical then fine as i swallow they can't really see what is inside but i try to use um i try to use my experience for example when my late mom was still alive she had colon cancer colon another name for colon is your large intestine so she had um growth in a large intestine and at times i start with those stories like just to get their attention so um when she had that um obstruction in her large intestine the meaning of that is that she will not be able to pass out undigested food so our undigested food is the physics that we pass out when we go to the toilet so and what they did for her was they did a surgical operation to bypass that large intestine for her so as science as stem teachers we should be able to relate every topic to what is around them now let me finish that story and they they, they did a little course on our tummy to bring out the end of a small intestine so from that part the undigested food comes out so it's when it's coming out it comes out in a watery form so the physics that comes out is coming out in a watery form so why is it coming out in a watery form? Because that physics one doesn't have opportunity to enter into the large intestine. So what happens in the large intestine, the function of the large intestine is to absorb water. So they don't forget. If they ask them what's the role of large intestine, they remember that story. And do you know what? A particular day, a student came to me and she told me, I mean, he told me that, excuse me, ma, this procedure that you're talking about, I have done it before. I have it. I am even carrying it. And he opened his shirt and he showed me the patch. So he has to carry, he can't go to toilets like the regular students. Even the funny thing was that I couldn't even remember the name of the surgery. That student told me the name of the surgery. So don't let us feel, oh, this student, they don't know. Um, they don't know. They don't, they are not there. They are even don't forget this um, student some of them they have um, a, a, a access to internet so some of them they watch movies where they see high school students perform a lot of experiments so you you know you we have to bring it to life and we should be able to relate it to what is around them let them see i remember a day some of my students they ran to me and said, well, come 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 so i was wondering what is it they said just come ma, come ma. and he took me to a place we have seen epi fights so, oh my that is epi fight because i told them that epiphytes are plants that grow on another tree so they somehow somehow they discovered they said oh this is what she's telling us and they took me there and subsequently whenever i am teaching that epiphyte i take all my students i say okay come come and see this is an epiphyte so let's authentic learning let them be able to relate you're talking about rust for example chemical change you're talking about physical change you're talking about in probably in chemistry bring it physical change this is physical change this is chemical change um whatever you're talking about make it real to them my next slide please peer to peer yeah so peer to peer is um 
when you know there are sometimes that we have high performing students in our classes so we can actually make those ones i what i do is i look for those high performing students i put them in a group with those that are still trying to find their feet and they are able to help them it can go along with that's the picture of my students that you're seeing you see them that's how they are helping themselves out you see so you're teaching a concept a, teach, a student might get it like quickly somebody else might still might need like two three times before you explain and you, oh this is what the teacher is trying to tell me however you can leverage on those students that uh that would understand you faster probably some of them they already have idea or probably some of them they have uh, elder ones that are taught them that topic they're able to understand or probably even in that class they're able to get you um un understand the concept faster you can tell them to help others what do you feel what do you okay titi can you still go ahead and explain there are some times that you might even need to switch to the local language and explain explain differentiation you need to um understand how each of your students how they learn some of them it's by hearing once they hear it they're fine some they need to practicalize some they need to see some it is um true songs i employ that a lot i i use that a lot so we can we can make which our students shouldn't see stem education as something so difficult there are things around them at times i tell them i want all these women that sell ugu in the markets what are they performing you see them they put the they soak their ugu in the water that's a uh, turgidity so what happens even when the ugu is looking with that by the time they put it inside the water it will look so fresh everything all the leaves will come up that's turgidity so if you are teaching turgidity as biology teacher flaccidity and turgidity um cell and his environment if you're teaching it and you're just saying uh, cell and his environment if you put a uh, well, cell in water or well, uh, what will happen what are we flowing blah 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 they might not really be able to relate but when you start with the story of uh, those women selling ugu is it not uh, that's what they are practicing even though they have not been to biology class but they are practicing turgidity once they put it in everything comes up if you have a carrot now that is already shrinking those are bookie they do it a lot they put all the carrots inside water what happens it comes up that means water is flowing into the plant cell and once water flows into the plant cell because of the cell wall it gets a shape that's the gdt so just make sure you're able to relate all that you're teaching to what is around them thank you sir the next one multimedia approach so we have a um, lot of ways you can get videos online that you can play for them um just you want to explain a difficult concepts uh, for example you're talking about cellular respiration now cellular respiration it's um glycolysis and Krebs cycle there are things that they might not be able to see but you can leverage technology you can use first simulation you can use it to teach difficult concepts for them and they can see it it's usually in fact they will see it as if they are playing game they will be so excited about it they are enjoying it so our class should be fun our class shouldn't behave this teacher is coming again no oh. ha ah oh my teacher it's too simple this uh chemistry teacher is coming again or you are coming in they are running out so when they know that is your no you, you should make your class fun thank you we can move to the next slide i hope i'm not rushing too much i'm just trying to keep to time that's what uh i hope i'm not running uh, too fast all right so i was talking about a uh, virtual okay yes yeah. so we can also make use of technology even if you feel oh i don't have a projector in my glass i um, i don't have this i don't have that but even on your phone there's a lot of things that you can achieve with your android phone although this session this class is not for that but there are a lot of things that you can still achieve just with that android phone that you have there are a whole lot of simulations that you can download your student can play with you can tell them go and download this and they'll feel like oh they are uh we tell them do this do that and they are so excited if they are playing game but somehow they are learning you can give them projects that's our next um, point you can give them projects tell them projects does not have to be at the beginning of the term i give you something then at the end of the term you submit it project could be something as little as composer song 
on this and because um i i realized over the years that i've been teaching that these students they love music a lot so i have leveraged on entertainment to reach out to them for every of my topics i have songs in fact i tell them compose a song for me i give you five marks so they are always i remember a particular day i walked into a class they had already done something wrong so we, you know we can't punish them i mean we can't um, beat them or whatever so i already told them that oh i was going to punish all of them that they knew that oh they were already in trouble or something so that afternoon as i walked into their class i teach my class anytime there are some teachers that want to say seven and eight they can't teach even in seven and eight i can teach so it's just about activities that you're coming with so even when they they're tired they know that oh this my teacher is coming with several activities they are they are awake so that particular day i walked into the class and um as they stood up to greet i said don't greet me because i was already cross with them i said don't greet me and i just turned on the board they already wrote the song they wrote the biology song something something and they just started singing all of them i said oh so are you using this to bribe me because they already know that oh i love songs okay oh, so let me hear you and they started uh lottery carry oxygenated blood and the whole class they've let they, they already learned that song you know and at the end of the day i just started laughing and i said okay your sins are forgiven and they were excited and that was just the end of the whole thing so we can actually do that for our students just make them interesting for them make it make it, make it come alive for them so you can give them projects it could be a week project it could be a day project you, it could be something that they can just construct in the class just tell them okay everybody sit down let's quickly do this and um are you trying to tell me something mr latif yes 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 okay. i think okay because of our time okay i think i'm wrapping up already yes so then uh, finally we have role play role play there are some concepts in stem that might be very difficult that's my student over there and uh, whenever we are teaching circulatory system we role play the flow of blood through the heart we use uh we improvise blood by using you know blue blue balloons uh, red balloons blue balloons representing the oxygenated blood red balloons representing ox oxygenated blood and i have like 10 of them four of them acting the um, four chambers of the heart and like that they role play the concepts and they're able to remember that oh it was chidi that played this role it was this person that took this role it was somebody that played vena cover that took the blood the oxygenated blood to the heart and they're able to remember those concepts and um, let me just wrap up by saying just move my slide forward leverage on technology to prepare yourself because all these uh, concepts if you want to use them you need to actually prepare for the class so it's not something that is when you get to the class that you'll be saying ah is the role play that i want to use is the answer on how do i want to do how do i want to uh, foster innovation no it's something that you really need to sit down before your class and you prepare well ahead then there are sometimes that nobody is an island of knowledge there are sometimes that i still call my friends oh how can i teach this topic better how can i what activity can i use so don't say i've been teaching it for the past 10 years i still want to come and use the same uh, method again so make sure you're always consulting as much you can move it forward you can move it forward i think i have some words for the educators our stem educators so make sure you consult the expert then finally invest in yourself thank god the um, speaker that came before me talked about networking it is very very important you cannot do it all alone like i would always say as i finish any of my training collaboration is better than competition and i want us to repeat it to ourselves collaboration is better than competition mr abdullah if you can have it on the screen you can just um type it and um, put it on the screen collaboration is better than competition for you to be an outstanding and exceptional stem educator to foster innovation 
problem solving skills, you need to collaborate with other STEM educators. Thank you so much, Mr. Abdulati, for having me this morning. And I wish every STEM educator the very best. Let's keep networking. Let's keep meeting ourselves. Let's keep expanding our scopes. Let's keep making education greater in Nigeria. Thank you for the opportunity. Wow, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ma. Thank you so much for accepting to do this. Thank you so much for everything you have to sacrifice because I know uh, it takes a lot of work. Uh, I know you have to like endure, you have to keep. Perfect value with us. It is really amazing. It is really amazing. So, like, just one person. If anybody had a question, if you have any question, can you just. Uh, put it and please be very important let's appreciate our speaker it takes a lot for us to be here and i'm glad that from what you have seen here today uh you should know how to teach them better so if you teach mathematics you teach chemistry you teach physics uh you teach whatever science video you're teaching you should uh, find a way to always do it better to teach it in a way that is going to uh be more uh explanatory and use more innovation in your class so don't just do uh what is it called don't just do with some work but the, the same way every single time so again thank you so much my really appreciate and then thank you for having me thank you so much my really appreciate is there any question okay no no, no question ma if there should be All any right. question i'm going to probably send it to you thank you so much ma. it's fine it's fine thank you enjoy the rest of your boot camp and, and this, bye ma. everyone thank you, so thank you. Ma, ma, ma. so much everyone for still being here uh we are this is the last day of the boot camp and we have just two sessions left our speaker is here i'm moving on to understanding the power of social media so you're an educator and uh, you have been hearing social media is a new good man you social media social media is a new cv but you don't know how to use it to amplify your voice to uh, um, uh amplify your impact then this is the session you can afford to miss our speaker is ready i'm going to bring her up now she may not be able to use a video uh because again i don't know a lot of things that really really happen a lot of things like and I, i'm just glad that our speakers are are like keeping up to their word and not just keeping up to their word but they're doing everything possible to be here to empower you uh everything they're doing everything possible for mrs adiola she has to go through a lot to be here she has to go to a position where she has for her to get network uh even mr joseph is currently an event so he has to like go to the back end so that he can be able to have the session even mr Olalikon, the one that the speaker that spoke on networking you have to make a lot of sacrifice to be here so please don't take this for granted okay so uh hello ma can you hear me ma please if you can hear me please let me know okay i can hear you let me know if you can hear me yes i can hear you perfect i can hear you clearly ma thank you okay ma, so i'm just going to okay so you can just uh go ahead so oh uh, just give me a second uh, i don't know um hello you say something, ma? Hello, can you hear me, ma? Okay, so just please, uh, let's wait a bit. Our speaker is going to join us back. She's ready for us. And we're just going to get started. So let me know how the session has been for you. Our session has been for you. Today is the end of the boot camp. And yes, uh, you can get the replay. You can get the replay on YouTube. And uh, I've also dropped the, the replay to the group. So you can click on the group, to, click on the link to watch the, the replay. It's going to be available. It's going to be available. Okay, so just uh, wait a bit.
Huh? It's still open. Okay, thank you. Thank you for this feedback. I'm still waiting for up, but then let's see. Okay, she's back. Great. Okay, I can hear you. Okay, let me please let me know if you can hear me now so that we can get going. Can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Please let me know if you can hear me. And please, can you see my slide? Please, if you're on here, please let me know if you can see the slide I'm sharing. Yes, let me know if you can see the slide. Yes, I can't hear you. You are still muted. Oh. Okay, she's back now. Okay, can you hear me now? Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you so much, um, Mr. Innocent. Can you hear me on see my side? Can you hear right. me, Abdelati? Yes, I can hear you now. I can hear you. All right, thank you so much. The network is okay. really bad. Continue I, that I am in transit. So thank you so yes, much sir. for being patient, guys. Thank you so much. And I'm glad we don't have any more network glitches going forward all right so if at any point you can't hear me just um indicate maybe in the chats or something so that i get to know that you can't hear me um thank you so i'll just I thank you so i'll just rush through the slides um abdulati uh, once i just say next just go to the next slide okay okay just go to the next slide since we already spent a lot of time all right so thank you um so guys i'm going to be talking about something that i am really excited talking about and um, when I have conversations with educators, that's one thing that is always at the top of my mind. And that thing is utilizing social media as an educator in the 21st century. Now, um, there are two areas that I would really like us to cover. And if you are really listening, guys, please listen as much as you can, even though it's going to be against all the odds, because at this point, I'm on transit. And um, I've been on a 20 hours um, road trip, like since yesterday, okay? So this is me doing this with everything I, I have got. So thank you so much for those of you who would, and, uh, you know, just sit and just listen, okay? Because I know that you'll be taking something out of this. Um, all right, so if you're listening, you realize that I will be circling everything I'm doing around two things, classroom development and two, personal branding. Um, good. So now, uh, let's go back to the blame game. Blame game, Abdulatif. Thank you. So talking about the blame game, um, I don't know about you guys, but I got to a point where um, during school, would I say during school now, around the university time, I love to tell stories. So uh, you're going to hear me say a few of those things um, during the course of my, my time here. So when I was in the university, right, there was a time when I would be, there's this particular lecturer, you know, I would always be like, guy, this man is always giving us the same notes, the same materials that he'll give generations before, you know, us. The man has been in the department for a very long time. Guys, if you can, if, if you if you can relate, just put it in the chat. You have that lecturer that would always recycle notes. In fact, he will not just recycle the notes, you know, recycling. Some things have to change when you are recycling. But in this case, the lecturer is not recycling anything. The lecturer is going to give you exactly the same thing he gave generations before your time. Your seniors, you can actually repeat your notes to them. And they'll be like, oh, nothing has changed, right? Good. Copy and paste. Thank you so much. Right? Um, so I used to have lecturers like that. And trust me, I was not keeping quiet. 
I would always be like, eh, why would you not research more? Why would you not update the notes? Why would you not do this? But guys, guys guess what? After a few years, I became an educator myself. And guess what? I saw myself doing exactly the same, exact same thing. Those things I was saying, oh, this person is guilty of. I was guilty of those things as well right um i had to get to a point where i was telling myself okay you are teaching um one plus one uh -huh. do you know what the recent development has been in that field of one plus one? Oh, or you just feel oh i'm just teaching elementary students one plus one so it cannot be different it cannot change it is the one plus one i am very familiar with now so what can change? I promise you guys, that's exactly the same thing that your lecturers are telling themselves. Oh, it's something that is familiar. It's this thing now. That's exactly why they are giving you the exact same notes, exact same thing. Do you get? So I got to a point where I was telling myself, okay, this is the exact same thing I was um, accusing my lecturers of. Now I am doing the same thing. Now I am doing the same thing. I move to the next slide. Okay, so I got to a point where I started asking myself, what are the things that I can do to improve my classroom? I had to start asking myself those questions. I started going on YouTube. Guys, if you don't believe that creativity can be triggered, then, I, I mean, you've not, you've not started. I'm sure when you go on YouTube, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you do that. Those of you who do go on YouTube, you realize that there's a lot of innovation going on a lot of um creativity a lot of um, people just come up with stuff and they're putting it on youtube and you're like oh my god these people are so creative right but do you know creativity and innovation can be triggered yes it can be let me give you an example for example when i began i started teaching in a low income community right and guess what i had a lot of children in my class so i would go on youtube sometimes to be like how do i manage a huge class and then I start coming up. There are so many things that you know how it is. A lot of things will come up on YouTube. And then you start going from one thing to the next, one thing to the next, one thing to the next. And before you know what's happening, guys, I started coming up with my own content. I started coming up with my own strategies, right? Um, it got to a particular point where I had students who, you know, um, you know, if, if you teach English, you realize that there's a particular point in time where you have passages in a week. You have one passage that you guys will read, you know, throughout the week, right? Now, going through those passages, I realized that um, a lot of my students would come to school. I would just even be the one to read that passage for them. They don't, they're not grasping it. They're not understanding it, right? So I had to tell myself, okay, we have to do something because at the end of the day, these students are going to write the standardized um, um, state tests. You know how they do it every term. They will write those tests and guess what? don't fail because they're not really getting it i cannot be the one answering the questions for them if if they are having um passages i cannot be the one who is reading passages for them making them understand i have to come up with strategies that will ensure that would ensure that they get it right so what did i do what did i do that's when my creativity all i call it now the fluid of creativity is coming up right and i had gone on youtube i had gone through these platforms and i was already exposed to certain things so what did i do i started coming up with strategies by myself so i had my students come up and what they did was uh, what i did was i would read that passage you know if it's ali and simbi went to fetch water you know that kind of um the story now it's just on paper so what i would do is i would read that story into my phone when i read the story into my phone I will now use my editing skills to attach um, pictures. I would attach pictures to the, so if it's Ali and Simbi, I'll look for the picture of Ali, I'll look for the picture of Simbi and attach it. Guys, hope you are, are you getting me? If you're getting me, please put it in the chat because I understand that um, there's a lot of noise in the background. If you're getting me, if you're getting me, if you're glued to what I'm saying, I put it in the chat, guys. Thank you so much for following. Okay, so um, what I did was I had to find a way to make the lesson come alive for these students. I had to make the stories come alive for these students, right? 
So um, I it, it's called animation. You attach um um what do I call it now? You attach videos or attach pictures to a, a voiceover, right? So that was what I did. So the next day when I appeared in school, what did I do? Did I bring out one and try textbook for them? No, I didn't do that. I instead brought out my laptop and I played the recording. So they heard the voice of Miss Agnes and then they were seeing pictures of the things that I needed them to understand. That was easier for them to understand why, because it was like um, English emotion. They were watching something rather than just having me, you know, having them just go through a page. And guess what? I got those, those kind of exposure from the things that I had seen from YouTube, from exposing myself to people doing those kind of things. Those ideas just will come, right? So creativity can be triggered depending on the platforms that you open yourself up to. That is the way it happens. And before you know what's happening, guys, guess what? I put um, that animation I created, I put it on social media, and guess what? A lot of teachers from all over the world reached out to me to tell me, oh my God, God, I, a lot did to help solve the problem, and a lot of them helped to me to give them permission to replicate what I had just done. Imagine, imagine the idea. Imagine that I decided to just give Okay, so please let's just wait a bit. I think it's a it's a network. Okay, so just please let's wait a bit. She's going to come back any moment from she's going to be back any moment from now. Please, I, I hope you're all getting value from this and we are not uh yes, this is so very, very important and I'm very sure you're going to see uh the impact or how she's able to analyze social media. She's someone that you really need to listen to. And you can check her out on especially LinkedIn. She's most active on LinkedIn. See a lot of projects she's she's having she's able to do because of a social media presence. Okay, so let's just wait for her. I think it's a network, or probably you, you might have to uh reschedule a session. Okay, because it really takes a lot for her to be here. She's on a 20 hour strip. And regardless of uh, whatever she, she wants, one of the issues that when you are traveling, you get to a point where the network just run away. You don't just have any network, you just have any network at all. Regardless of whether you're using Blue MTN or anything that you might be using. So uh, I believe that might have been the, that might have been the case. Okay, so let me just try to set up a message, but 
Okay, so maybe what we do now because of our time is we need to bring up our next speaker who is also going to be our last speaker for this session. And then probably we're going to reschedule uh, Miss Agnes session back because it's a very, very important session. We have to reschedule it back. Okay, so let's just go ahead with that. And then if she come in, she might still... Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Oh, what about can you hear my own voice? Please let me know if you can hear me. Can you hear me? I need to see your feedback. Hello, can you all hear me? Okay, let me say that. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much. So I'm going to bring up bringing up our second speaker now. Uh, our last speaker, rather. Okay, so I'm just going to bring him up now. He's here already. I'm just going to read out his profile so that we can go on uh, with the session. Okay, so uh, Mr. Coach Innocent Wasiri is a special education teacher and an education researcher. He's a founder of Karatsu Learning, an edtech platform that connects parents and tutors. He's an educational education entrepreneur who believes that every teacher should be a millionaire and a teacher's reward is on earth and not in heaven. Yeah. His goal is to raise a thousand millionaire teachers by 2030. So today he's going to be speaking on unlocking the entrepreneurial spirit, creating multiple streams of income as educator, as an educator. Okay, so sir, you can just you can go ahead, sir. We're glad to have you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for accepting to do this. I really appreciate it, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. Hi, thank you so much, Mr. Abdullah TV. You've put in so much into this. And the few sessions I was able to attend was really awesome. Okay, so um, let me just jump right in. He has done an introduction, and I'll go right into my session. Now, I'm talking about how... We can make good money. I love money. I am the teacher who, when they say, um, sorry, let me put on my glasses because my eye is doing me somehow. Just a minute, let me clean. Now, I am the teacher who loves money so much that I wake up every morning and think about how I can make more money. I wake up every morning and think about why, why are teachers not making money? So it's, it is sad. But then... That's the reality that a whole lot of teachers are broke, like poor, and this uh, this this um, profession we've chosen is something that can make you a millionaire, not a billionaire, but probably not. But then you can live in millions and and be glad. You can you can swim in in cash and not be in lack, and. So I'm just going to open our eyes to one or two things. The last speaker spoke about how she put out her videos on um, YouTube and teachers all around the world reached out to her. And I'm thinking, whoa, she's not even supposed to be in Nigeria again. That's the power of social media. So those teachers reaching out to her, she can reach out to them and say, oh, I would love to come over for like a teacher exchange program or something. Can you make that happen? And you see, the, the world is beautiful at the moment because of social media. And if you can think outside the box, you would make so much money. Now, teaching really pays less and it pays really little and schools will even stress your life. Even for the schools that pay really well, the last time I worked in a classroom was two years ago. 
2022, November, December, thereabouts. So, um, so December, December, that's 2022, December. And I was earning about 250K then with some really good packages here and there. But then um, you would work. You can't be collecting that much and not work. I had colleagues that were collecting up to 400, 500. I still have colleagues that earn up to 600 and more. But then they would work. They would work their way out of... Now, that's what the, 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 the world looks like now. But teachers don't look at other ways of making money. If you ask a teacher, what's your side hustle? The best they can do is to say uh, they want to do lesson. And I'm thinking... Is that the only thing you can come up with? Even the lesson, people don't think about it as a business. It is important for teachers to think like entrepreneurs, like yeah. business people. You know how you go to the market and a, an Igbo man is telling you, uh, so because dollar don't go up, I cannot say this, oh yeah, I bought 200 naira for 50. I'm telling you 400 because of dollar. he's calculating well. But now prices of things are up transportation are, is expensive how many people got a raise in their salary can you see we don't think like entrepreneurs but the entrepreneurs out there quickly increase their price as things are going up they increase now dollar is down people are still not bringing down their prices they are saying oh the goods they ordered are not here but as teachers we are not even thinking in that light nobody has sat down to say oh um transportation increased like for those in abuja i used to enter maybe 200 from Guarimpa to Banex. Now it is like 500 naira. That is over two times the money. But your salary has not gone two times up. Why? And you are not worried. Teachers have to start thinking like entrepreneurs. Teachers that used to do lesson for 20k last year. Why are they not doing lesson? Why are they not doing? Why are they not doing lesson for 40k this year? Because the prices of things have gone up. Do you understand? So let's just jump right into it. Um, now, if you look at your salary, for example, let me just add this example before I move on to the main thing I want to talk about. You would, um, you realize that, okay, do this little math. I don't know. So let's do an example for somebody that earns 60 or 60,000 error. If you pay a thousand error monthly and you go to work 20, let's say 25 times, sometimes you go on Saturdays, um, that's 25K gone from your 60K you're left with about 35,000 naira. If you divide 35,000 by 22 working days or by 30 days, let's even say 30 days because Saturday, yes, they should pay you for your weekends. By 30 days, it means as somebody that's gone to school and graduated and is an expert, you've worked up to five years, you, have a, you don't end up to 1,000 naira daily. That should sink in properly. So you, you go out, pay your transport. I've not even taken out your feeding money from that because you also eat. So if you take out transportation and feeding, you basically earn maybe 800 naira. Is it because of 800 naira daily? You wake up in the morning as early as 5.36, you bath, take, try to beat the hold up, get to the other end of town because most people work in, in cities they cannot afford to live in. So if you're in Abuja, I'm conversant with Abuja, so I'll keep using Abuja as an example. You go all the way from, from Suleja or from Maraba in Nasarawa State, come into Abuja to work and go back, and the gain you make for that day is 800 Naira. That is how much you should look at yourself and say, oh, this is what I earn. Look at your, your salary from that point of view, and you realize that you're not being fair to yourself. You're not being fair to the people that even sent you to school. Your parents out there in the village that you're supposed to be taking care of. You're not being fair to your children because how do they grow up? How would they grow up to, to live a better life if they are earning that, if, if you're bringing in that much? That's why we get frustrated as Nigerians because we don't think out of the box to make more money. Okay? All right. Now, um, let me go through my notes. Where you can easily make money so because I've, I've said all these things, people will be thinking, so what do, you, what do you want me to do? I've done my best. What do you want me to do? People of God, my people, the internet is a leveler. The internet is where you have to be. The internet is where you, you cash out. 
Okay. Um, are we together? Let me ask that question at this point. Mr. Abdul Latif, please can you let me know if people are getting what I'm saying? Yes, sir. They're getting it, sir. Oh, beautiful. So I can kick off because it's like I'm talking to myself here. All right. Uh, so the internet is a leveler. I'll give an example of um, a business that came up and became a leveler. And we all know the example is OP. We all use OP. Everybody has OP. And what did they use? Internet. Does OP have any office or any big um, building? that is like a, a, an office for them. No, they don't. But a recent survey showed that OPE is the biggest bank in Nigeria according to valuation. OPE is bigger than uh, Zenit Bank. OPE is bigger than Unit Bank. OPE wow. is bigger than TB. According to the valuation, their market value, they are bigger than all those banks. I even saw an analysis online that says OP is bigger than four banks put together. Yes, four. I can't remember the exact banks. I want to quote something and be wrong here. So four banks, maybe four of those smaller banks, maybe Jai's Bank and all those other, put four or five of them together. OP is bigger than them. And they have buildings all over. OP has small, small shops. You see OP has, having small, small shops. Shop. That's what they have. I live in Kano at the moment. Where the OP office I see around is a shop where they sell something, then the guy can put one small table. That's the OP office. And you go, he answers you, and he sells you goods by the side. That's OP shop. But then they are bigger than four banks put together in Nigeria. They made use of the internet. The simple thing was you don't have to go out there to do anything. Use your phone, go online, and set up your account, and they'll verify. That's all. The internet was what they made use of. Now, bringing it down to our level as teachers, you can come up. Let, let me give you another statistic. I love numbers. Um, Nigeria has about 41 million users online. 41 million online users. I think even Facebook should have up to that number. Your goal is to reach, if in, in that 41 million, Let's say 10 million. I'm trying to be as modest as possible. 10 million is just for parents, just parents that have kids in kindergarten or primary or secondary or at any level you teach or you work with as a teacher. Just 10 million people. Your goal in this life is to reach 100,000 of them. Out of 100,000, only 1,000 should be consistent subscribers to what you sell. I will explain what you can sell your skill, your math, your English, your science skill, anything you do can be sold online. Now, if 100,000 subscribes to what you do and they pay only 5,000 Naira monthly, you'll be making 500,000 Naira from your online activities. Why will you want to go and stay in a school and sing? Uh, a is for Apple, B is for Bo. Your throat to pay your parents to come and do what they want to do. Children will shout, headache, this one, you get query. They come on, guys. We just don't want to make use of the internet. And the few people that make good use of this internet, they cash out. Even the people that have the money still, go and check how much Cristiano Ronaldo makes online. Check how much um, Beyonce makes online. How much does Rihanna makes online? Rihanna makes more money online than her music, but we all know her for her music. How much does Kim Kardashian, all those people, oh, brother, Shaggy comes online, we are going to watch and all those things. What are we doing online, guys? There are parents that want your skills, that want your services. Go online, show yourself, show up every day for as long as it takes. Someday it will click. And then you see people, oh, oh this guy, oh, this guy, oh, this guy. We, if, if I say to Tachike, we all know him. He's somebody in one village in the east. He's not even in town. But Tichachike is, a, is an online sensation and people pay him to come, ar come around to do one thing. They don't even pay him for, for education stuff. I, I saw somebody paying him to fly all the way to Abuja from where he is and they put him in a hotel to come and learn one course on cooking or something. I don't know. But the fact that he's putting up their name on his page and people are associating with that's off. He calls himself, thank you very much. He calls himself the village teacher because he's in the village. But the internet puts him out there for all of us, all of us in town. 
we are all jumping on Tita Chike because he's putting himself out there. Now, imagine Tita Chike comes up to say he wants to teach maths and he wants people to pay 5,000 naira. Do you think Tita Chike would go home with at least with less than five thousand with less than five hundred thousand no so you have to show up whatever you're doing show up do it there are different ways you don't have to do what he's doing you don't have to do what he's doing for example the person that has hosted this conference he's actually basically setting himself up to as an authority in this field if you check his social media page mr Dulatif's page he calls himself the um, flipped classroom teacher, right? Or experts. So what, what is it, please? Can you give me the exact term you use? Flip, I know it's a flipped classroom something. It's the expert or teacher or something. Mr. Latif, can you help me out, please? Flipped classroom experts. Flipped classroom experts. He has put himself out there as the flipped classroom expert. Some of you has, have never heard of that word before. Some of you will go and Google it. And then anytime somebody mentions flipped classroom, who comes to your mind, Abdul Latif? Oh, a school wants to do a training. Who comes to your mind, Abdul Latif? Um, so he is not setting himself up to work with parents, from what I've learned, from what I've studied on his page. He's not setting himself to work with parents. There are thousands of schools. You know the way Nigeria is filled with churches and mosques every, every corner. There's a church in every street. There's a mosque in every street. There's actually more schools than churches and mosques put together. Every corner you go, there's like two, three schools, two, three schools. And I promise you, even if just 2% of the schools, 1% of the schools in Nigeria identify with him as an expert, that is all you need. That is all you need. See, the internet is so big, even big stars like David have not really explored it up to 20%. Does David have up to 10 million followers? I doubt. He doesn't. How many are we in Nigeria? I just said we have up to 41 million active users online. So, can you see? He has not even gone anywhere. There is still more room for him. Then you have only 1,500 followers on Facebook and you are sitting down. Why? Why do you go on Facebook and every time everything you post is 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 a money devotion? Do you
Fiz a mira de canhinha ali. Can you hear me, please? Okay, thank you so much. I I'm just going to wait a bit for our speakers for our speaker to be back. Uh since this network. So please let's just uh wait till it just hang on. You join us back as soon as possible. Okay, it's back you now. Okay, sorry about that. The internet just decided to, uh, to mess can you up. Hear him? Can you all hear me? Alyssa, welcome back, sir. Yeah, I'm back. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Um, okay. What's the challenge here now? Can you all hear me? Okay, thank you. Hi guys, can you hear me? Yes, I'm I can. back. I, I can't. Can you please say something, sir? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, beautiful. Great. Yes, Sorry about you, that. Clarissa. Internet actually messed up as usual. Can go ahead, sir. Okay, so I'll just yes, jump I right. Can. can you hear me too? Loud and clear, I can hear you. All right, so I'll jump right in and then, um, so um, what can you sell online as a teacher? You can sell your skill, you can be a math teacher online, you teach math. Every child, most children have issues with math. You can be, there's a woman that sells math courses. So she basically teach topics, I mean topics, not subjects. She will teach multiplication, addition, long division and sell. I won 5,000 Naira. I bought one or two of her courses. 5,000 Naira. I just wanted to see what she's doing, and I paid for two. I can't remember her name now. I would have mentioned her name. There is another lady that owns an online school. She does home lesson, and she goes online to talk about it, why it's very important, and um, guess what? She has about 10 teachers that does lesson for over 40 children. And she collects her money, she pays them. She already has a school. That's a school. A school that does not have a building. You can even have a school. So just as the internet is a leveler, it can be a leveler for you too. There's a lot you can do. There are lots of people selling um, phonics courses. Oh, teach your child to read in 20 days using this beautiful phonic course. Then you, you teach them the sound of the alphabet, sat pin, jolly phonics, wanty wanty. It's as easy as that. Sell it for 10,000 Naira. If you can sell that to 100 people every month, that's a lot. If you can sell that to 100 people. See, it's as little as, you know how kids go for Islamia in the morning, in the evening? You can do online Islamia for Muslim students if you're an IRS teacher. So it goes as far as that. Oh, IRS teacher, Islamia. Share a teacher, you do like a Bible club. Where children come online, you, you tell them stories about the Bible, and that's all. You, they, you sing one song and tell them bye bye, go offline. In your house, you are making that money. Parents will be glad that somebody is teaching the, the kids the word of God, right? Same thing with Islamia. Oh, you can teach children French. Home economics, you can organize cooking class for kids, and you see people signing up. It's a long list of things you can do. But let me tell you what happens on the internet. People might not really know they need your service until you put it out there. I promise you, maybe no school ever thought of actually doing a training for flipped classroom. I think in my 10 years of teaching, 
I have I've, I've heard of that just once. I attended a training about it once. And now Mr. Abdulatif is putting himself out there. Schools now start seeing the need to learn about flipped classroom. You don't need to see people knowing how to do what you do. Immediately you put yourself out there, people start seeing the need for the service you render. A simple example, nobody thought of breaking Guinness World Record in Nigeria. Only one or two people have done it. Hilda Basi came, did it big. All of a sudden, within one month, I'm, somebody's doing world record for sewing, world record for plating hair. Another person wants to cook. Uh, come on, guys. People will never, nobody woke up one morning and say, hey, our problem is world record. One person did it before you know. Other people are trying to break. We didn't even know those that had broken record before that time, before Hilda Basi. But when she did it, people started realizing that, oh, some people had broken their own record before. Where were those people before? Just show up, do it, and do it. Create a niche for yourself. You can call yourself the online phonics teacher, the online math teacher, the exceptional math teacher, whatever it is. Just It should be a simple sentence. What do you do? Explain to your Facebook profile. Don't put child of God or something, or those things will put the hottest chick. Or, no. If you check my Facebook profile, I, it's a simple thing. I said... I empower teachers to make money outside the classroom. Simple. Anybody can read that and understand what I do. I work with teachers. I help them make more money. Simple. You get. Show your results. I say, oh, so I worked with this child. You don't have to put the picture of the child. Oh, I worked with this child and he learned how to read in three months. Ah, somebody that has been doing less sin for the past four years and the child cannot even spell if uh, uh, I go up, up I go. The parents will start the lesson teacher and contact you on Facebook to teach. Do Facebook adverts. It's not that expensive. You can say, oh, at the end of the month, I want to dedicate only 20K for Facebook adverts. You would reach more people. The month I did Facebook adverts, I got over 300 followers. But I stopped that month because I was paying in dollars. I didn't know how to convert it to Naira. And within that period, that was like four months ago or so. Till now, I have not gotten up to 15 followers. And I'm very lazy about it. Because at least I am making a whole lot of money. See, let me even give you one example. In December, I December Christmas, I just woke up and said, huh, let me do a training for teachers. And I charged 10K. 25 people signed up, 250K. I did Christmas beautifully. It's as simple as that. I had positioned myself out there as a professional that can help teachers make money. And so when I show up and say, oh, pay money, people will pay. When you position yourself as a professional and you say pay, people will pay. If I'm inviting Mr. Abdul Latif to say, um, come to my school and he says pay 50,000 error, I won't argue because he has placed himself as a professional. Even this training or this, this boot camp he's doing is basically him establishing himself. He's basically him establishing himself. He has organized a boot camp. He brought in at least 20 educators. If there's one thing for you to come up and speak like me, there's another thing for you to organize other people to come and speak. That, that makes you super, super. Speaking makes me an authority, but then um, organizing other speakers to come makes me like a senior brother of the authority. So he's practically setting himself up for success. I won't be shocked that in the next two, three years, uh, Ministry of Education is organizing something and they call him for consultation and he's charging one million era. It starts from here. Now we are doing this training, our internet is going on and off. Maybe next year, we are now doing it in a big hall at Transcorp and all. But he had a, a very humble beginning. So don't look at your beginning. Where you are, start there. Look at me talking like, oh, I have established and all. Oh, I was talking Nepal took light. I don't have this thing. I don't have an inverter. So this is me now with you. My internet went off. I checked MTN. MTN is one kind, one thing, one thing. But then it gets better over time. It gets better over time. Nobody starts from up there unless you're the president's child and you have 20 million to spend. Start with what you have. Use what you have. Okay, so I said pick a niche. Brand yourself. Just like Mr. Abdul Latif. I keep using him as an example because he's the one that is hosting us here and it means we all know him. Brand yourself. He has called himself the flipped classroom expert. What are you branding yourself as? Pick something, pick a niche, okay? And then show up daily. Show up. 
don't sit down and think people will see you. Go and check Mr. Abdul Latif's post. Maybe five people will like it. But you don't expect him to stop because he's seen um, my own post that has uh, 20 likes. At least I get up to 20. The least, least, maybe 15, 20. And Mr. Abdul Latif gets five. He will now look at me and feel discouraged. Meanwhile, me, I'm looking at somebody that is making 200. And that 200 person is, is looking at somebody that is make, posting and getting 1 million, million likes. And I promise you, the people that, that actually make good money online is not by likes. I, I promise you, I've seen that happen. Of the 20, 20 to 25 people that signed up for that, my course on, in December, none of them commented. I mean, none. Some of them might be here. None of them commented on my post or asked one million questions. They just came into my inbox, sent me the money, showed me receipts. They did not come and be asked. Meanwhile, if you go to my post, go to my Facebook, you see a whole lot of comments. You will see up to 100 comments. Hey, this is good. Well done. Great job. They're no pay. It's not by likes and comments. They're not they pay. Likes and comments does not pay the bill. The people that paid did not even come online. Um, there's this lady that does sewing. Um, what's her name again? Vicky James on Instagram. She charges a million naira for her training. And then you go online, go on the comment section, you see people shouting, one million, that's too much. If she wants to sew clothes for you, she charges you in dollars, like $5,000, $7,000. You see people, hey, that is too much. Oh, hey, $5,000, don't feed my generation. One thing, one thing. Somebody has paid. Why you people are there shouting on the comment section? One person has paid. One person has paid. Three people have paid. So while she makes that post, and you people are busy making that noise, it's giving her more visibility to the real people that will pay. The person that wants to pay is there. And don't price yourself low. Those that will pay you will pay you. I personally worked in a school that, that, that have paid me 10,000 euros. The same me has worked in a school that have paid 250k. The same me is working in an international organization that pays me now in dollars. The difference is I chose to go where I am needed. It's the same me. I can still be in that school any 10K. I still have colleagues I met in that 10K school. They are still there. And they come on my post and say, well done. You are doing well. Those are not my customers, I promise you. Anytime I'm trying to sell a course, it's not people that are earning 10K that will pay 10K for the course. I will have to do an advert. I'm building a course now for 50K. Do you think it's somebody that earns 30K that will come and pay 50K for the course? No. But those people, when they are commenting, hey, great job. Oh, you are doing well. This is beautiful. Knowledge, wisdom. I got impact from this. Other people will see it and just silently come and pay. So don't look at the numbers for now. Just be consistent daily. And pay for adverts. Pay for adverts. I use Hilda Bassi as an example. Hilda Bassi didn't just wake up one morning and show up to say she wants to do Guinness record. She spent good money preparing for the PR. Hello, it seems our, our speaker is having some kind of network issue with me. We just wait a bit for, for him to come back as soon as possible. Okay, so I, I hope you have been getting value so far. I've been learning a lot about unlocking the entrepreneur spirits. How you have to think beyond your classroom, you have to think beyond that one month salary that you're getting. You have to think of how to 
make more money out to be more valuable as a teacher okay for this session for you so far this is the last session of the the boot camp i'm so excited it has been we've gone we've come a long way it has been an amazing journey it has been a very stressful demanding yes but then it's also been, it has also been a fulfilling experience knowing that a lot of stars will be transformed by this a lot of stars will be transformed that some enough data from us there's going to be a certificate for for participants of this boot camp the certificate is really going to be given to those that are very that are active in the group in the boot camp so it's back now okay you're welcome Internet again um all right so yeah you might be thinking so how do i do this how do i do this there's nothing in this world that you want to do that somebody is not doing already go online find them look at what they're doing use that to build your own okay i was talking about hilda bassi and how she wanted to to come out to do her own um world record. she had a goal her goal was not to win world record her goal was to be a celebrity chef her goal was to be a celebrity chef so she prepared herself she got a company that could put her out there she is the cook they are the, the 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 people that could put her out there and then she she got that visibility properly we all got to hear Hidabasi, Hidabasi, everybody jumped on it. We, some people were even praying and fasting for her. Governors showed up. Governors showed up for her. I think they even gave her chief dancing title too, on top cooking. Meanwhile, is she the first cook? No. But because she put herself out there. So don't start and say, okay, you want to sit down and... No, put yourself out there. Put yourself out there. Find people that are doing it. Collaborate with them. Pay for adverts. Pay, pay, pay for it. Nothing good comes easy. It's fast. If I if I put down 50k monthly for adverts, I should be able to get up to 5,000 followers before the end of the year. 5,000 new followers before, what is 5,000? 50k monthly, I should be able to get up to 20,000 20, followers before the end of the year. It's expensive, but then those 20,000 followers will bring money. Remember, you've put yourself as somebody that wants to sell. You are not just coming online to make a jest of yourself. You're putting yourself out there like somebody that wants to sell, somebody that wants to reach out to people. So when you're getting those people, they are coming to meet you as somebody that sells knowledge. So when you now put out a product, you make your money quickly. It's not hard. You now say, oh, um, I want to organize a Bible club for free. That's a very good way to start, for example. Or... An online Islamia for free. Okay? You gather these people. So, parents, would you want your children to have online Islamia for free? Yes. Um, okay. So, we'll do five sessions. And they come online. You teach them how to recite the Quran. You make it fun. Don't just be, be rigid. Come up with a better way. You have to, to be different from others. You make it fun that the kids will go back and tell their parents. Okay, it seems uh, his network has kicked him out again. So I just wait a bit for him to come back. Wow, well, hope you've been getting value so far.
Okay, so it's trying to join back. I go come to Facebook to my WhatsApp now. It's going to join us from any moment from now. So just uh hold on. We don't go anywhere yet. Don't go anywhere. Make sure you are here so that you can get the value. This is the last session we are having in this boot camp. Uh, for the session on social media that we have not completed the record that on YouTube so that I can get access to it. Okay, it's back now. All right. Okay, so let me finish this example I was giving and then I would give room for questions. Now, um, now you gather these children for free and then you do, you make it fun. Remember I said, make it fun. You sing songs, you teach them how Hello, ah, the, the network is really, really disturbing. And like, I know we really have a lot for us, but the network is not just, not just epic matter. Okay, we just let's just wait here. Please just hold on. Uh, he's going to join us much as possible. I know he's doing everything possible from his end to make sure that we are, we, we resume. Yes, he's back now. All right, so I have to switch to my phone since the laptop is messing up, and then let me stand on the veranda and see how this goes. We have to do what we have to do. All right, you're welcome, sir. All right, now um, you do this training for I say training you. You do this class for free for the kids, maybe every Friday and Saturdays, and then at the end of the meeting or, or at the end of the five days, you now tell the kids, "Oh, sorry, free class has ended. If you want to continue, you have to pay something." Don't charge less. Don't charge 5,000. Charge like 10,000. Those that will pay will pay. You'll get two or three people. Else. Those two or three people will go back and tell others. At initially, you'll get three people, maybe 20. Those people will go out there and tell others, oh, somebody like this, and um, he is he's so good. We enjoy this. Is Islamia we do now. People start coming in. Post your results, post the get get testimonials and post. Okay. Now, when you do this, over time you just see that you've grown. People will show up, people will pay for your service. You now do advert to reach out to more people. So you start with the people you know and now reach out to the people that do not you do not know. You build trust with the people you know and you use that trust to sell it to other people. So while building a business. Yes, you're building a business, but you have to also learn how to sell. Okay? You can do this with any subject. You can do this with any subject. I promise you, it works over and over and over again. I do free trainings most almost once in a month. There's no month I don't do free trainings. The day I say pay, I know the numbers will not be as much as those that, that show up for the free training, but I will get somebody that will pay. 
I will get people that will pay, and it's it. I always meet my targets. I always always meet my targets. Okay, so I'll leave it at this point before the internet messes up again and ask if there's any question. Wow, this is this is amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. All right, so if there is no question, I don't know. Any question? Any question from anyone? Uh, before we wrap it up, thank you so much. This is last session, and I'm very sure you get so much value from this session. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Innocent, for all your support, for everything. I really appreciate it. Welcome. I don't think it's a special note. I hope from this session alone that been exposed to different ways of making money beyond just their salary. And more importantly, they should have a mindset reset now about just you know staying in a particular place or just uh, being stagnant or just any pay less. And I'm glad one of the things I read from your profile that you put there is that. We believe that teachers' world is not in heaven. It is actually here on earth. So if anybody has lied to you, okay, that's what is in heaven. So you can be poor, yeah. Then you're going to go and be rich in the heaven. You don't spend money in the heaven. You want to be rich. You don't need it. Become your rich. Become very rich, yeah. But become as rich as possible. And the thing is, and one thing I, why I'm so passionate about this particular concept and topic is that I realized that growing up, I don't want to become a teacher. And the reason for that is that even the teachers that are teaching me, they're not an inspiration to me. And that's why if you go to your class and you ask, who, what do you want to become? They'll say doctor, lawyers, because those are the guys that inspire them. Those are the guys that uh, that they live the life they desire themselves. They can desire the life they're living. But as a teacher, you have to get to the point where because of the way you are living, your student naturally wants to become a teacher. But you're like, ah, wow, our teacher is very rich. Our teacher is doing this. Our child is doing that. So it means I want to become a teacher. So that's actually a challenge for you. So just going to wrap it up here since we don't have any question. Thank you so much, once again, Mr. Innocent. And everybody that have been here from the beginning of the bootcamp today and now, thank you so very much. I appreciate the presence. I don't take it for granted. I hope you have gotten value. So there's going to be certificate of participation for this, uh, for this bootcamp. And it's going to uh, be given to only people, only those that are active. And that activity is even relative because you might not actually join live, but they will play as they will plays uh, on YouTube. So you can go on YouTube and, and and watch it. So for you to be eligible to get a certificate, I'm going to send a, a, a form to the group where you're going to fill a particular form, just like a feedback form. And it's more of uh, letting us know what you have learned from the boot camp and how it is for you. So it's only those that fill that form. Uh, and are able to answer the questions that we asked in the form that are going to get the certificate. So everything is going to be sent to the group. Again, once again, thank you so much for being part of this uh, boot camp. I hope you have learned a lot. I hope uh, it has been transformative for you. Thank you so much, and I'm going to see you all at the top. Thank you so much for being part of the Brigitte Educators. Because I, I need to let you know, we're a community. This is not stopping here. Uh, probably from May, we're going to start a weekly session. Yes, we're going to start a weekly session we're going to bring in speakers like this. The little speakers we're supposed to bring on board, but, but then because of time. And even if you also check, you see that most of our speakers, they're not really able to cover, they're not able to talk extensively as they would like to because of the 30 minute time. So we're going to bring them up where you can have one hour, one and a half hour to just speak to you on a particular topic, relevant topics that is necessary for your empowerment. Okay, so thank you so much. I remember on myself, I'm the the flip classroom uh, expert. I'm so excited that we are, you're part of this. Thank you so much and have a fantastic day ahead. Thank you, thank you, thank you.